Welcome back to the channel. So I have had the Wacom Move Inc for about seven months. Wacom very kindly sent this over in uh, January, I believe, of this year for review. And it's taken me all this time to evaluate it and work out what I think of it. So from a photographer's perspective, I am reviewing this today. Now, this is the, as I mentioned, the Wacom Move Inc. And it is absolutely wafer thin. And before I get started with the functionality of the actual unit itself, let's just unplug that. USB-C cord from my Mac Studio goes into USB-C up here. There is exactly the same on this side and this side. And let's just put that over there. This is the uh, pen that comes with it. Now Wacom very kindly sent over the frame. It has these feet on the back. You fold down and then it goes into this neat little pouch. I will list all of these products in the description. So that's the little easel for it. And then the actual Wacom tablet itself, uh, they also supplied this little leather slip case. And it's literally as simple as that. And the Move Ink just goes inside there. And then that goes over the corner. A little bit of branding on the corner there. Working inside Capture One. Now, in my previous video, I featured uh, the Wacom Move Ink in the video. And I'll put a link to that up on the screen here somewhere. And I was showing how you can use it as a dual screen working with Capture One, and it works out really well. Now, by and by, just whilst I have you, I have tried this exact sort of same sort of setup with the iPad uh, Pro and the pencil, Apple Pencil. And it doesn't give the same sort of functionality and professionalism this gives. I just want to eliminate that from the comments. I would highly recommend going for the Move Inc over the iPad. Also, let me just grab this. I am coming from an old Intuos um, Wacom standalone uh, retouch pad. So that was what I was using before. It is way heavier than this screen uh, retouch pad. But so you know where I'm coming from. Inside Capture One, this is a session I've been working on. So I want to retouch this beauty image. So I'm literally going to go, use my pen, edit with Photoshop. I'm going to edit as a TIFF. So we're now in Photoshop. Now I have my display touch screen. Let's just check this. So I have it turned on at the moment. So I can use my fingers to zoom in if I wish, but I don't actually like that just in case when I'm resting my palm on the screen, it might interrupt my, my flow. So I'm going to turn that off. So now it's just literally the pen that's working. Now you can probably watch my key inputs here. So I'm going to use the space bar and that's going to bring up the hand tool and that's going to enable me to move around. So I'm going to zoom in, command plus. I'm working on a Mac obviously. And then let's come over to here. I'm going to be using the spot healing brush tool. And I want to get rid of this line. The beauty about being able to retouch on the screen is it feels really intuitive. Being able to retouch directly onto the issues that you're having to deal with. I find that incredibly easy rather than having to look up at a display. Now, I am someone that uses glasses for um, computer work. These glasses are specifically designed for displays. So I can see, and everything is absolutely crystal clear. Let's go Command Zero, zoom out again. I just want to retouch this mole down here. Now, obviously, you could use this with a laptop, but this configuration for me is the best configuration I've found so far in the last sort of six, seven months of using this. Uh, I use this setup in the studio if I'm retouching live on a client shoot. And again, as you can see, this is working in absolute real time. There's no lag, there's no delay, but you get the general idea. 
You do have some custom keys that come up if you press um, either here or here on the screen itself. And you can configure these custom keypads uh, that come up. Don't use any of those, to be honest. I just use the keyboard shortcuts. I find that works perfectly for my use case scenario. Let me know what you think about this Wacom Move Inc. Uh, is it something you're considering buying? Do you consider it overpriced for what it is? Um, I think it's absolutely perfect in terms of moving uh, a retouch station into something small like this. And I much prefer utilizing um, the desktop to retouch like this. And I don't have any issues with the size of the screen either. Um, as I mentioned, this is connected just via a USB-C cable into the back of the um, Mac Studio. The only other thing I have connected is a SSD drive and then the power cable coming out of there. So that is all very straightforward. Might be a little bit overkill as far as you're concerned, but works incredibly well for me. So yeah, let me know in the comments below if you would like me to review the Wacom Move Inc with another piece of software. And yeah, name that below. I have reviewed it, as I mentioned, um, briefly with Capture One. I've used it a lot with DaVinci Resolve as a dual screen, and that's been incredibly handy. It mounts perfectly in the uh, micro um, color grading console. So you can use it as a standalone screen in that. Please give me a like if you found this video useful. Please consider subscribing and ring that bell if you'd like to be notified of future videos. And hopefully, I will see you in another video soon. Bye for now.